Hey friend and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to get saved. If you are a believer and if somebody walked up to you and said, hey, I want to get saved, what do I do? And you don't feel confident in answering that question, stay locked into this video. If you are an unbeliever, I'm so glad that God has entrusted me to be a part of your journey, that you would take the time out of your schedule to hear what I have to say. I'm going to guide you in just understanding what being saved means, why it's important, and how to do it. And my prayer is that in response to the tugging that you feel on your heart from the Lord, that you accept his invitation to be a part of his family. I am um, just really excited for everything that God is doing within the body of Christ. And as we continue to grow, I think it's really important that we are not only understanding the word for ourselves, but making disciples and being able to share this video with you is just part of the mission that God has laid on my heart. And it is an honor. Now, if you are new here, okay, my name is Dr. Charlotte Walker. I am a pediatric nurse practitioner by trade, finishing up my secondary certification um, to be a dual certified nurse practitioner in psych and peds. I have my doctorate in nursing. I love the Lord and his people and his word. I also am a regular human being. Like I love professional wrestling. Okay. And ain't nothing you can say to me about it. Um, I love to hang out with my friends and travel and I have a husband and two dogs. Like I, I also live life authentically. And I love to help high achieving women learn how to live life the way that God designed mentally, emotionally, and spiritually well. So we talk about mental health in the Bible on this channel. And I do a lot of evidence-based practice conversations and putting and positioning evidence-based information and making that submit to the word of God. Why? Because God created science. Science literally is us studying his creation. And so we have to ensure that the way that we interact with science is in a way that's in alignment with the creator. Okay. And I learned lots of cool things. Look at this brain I got, y'all. I'm so excited for my next video. Okay. Um, but I am hopeful that if you found this video, that this is a place that you want to be. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. I'm like this close to reaching the 1000 subscriber milestone. So if you feel that girl, click that button. Okay. Click the button for me. I I'm trying to see what my obedience is, <laughs> is doing in this season. Um, I am super excited to hop right in. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. There are four steps to you going from being unsaved to saved. Okay. Now, before we get started, I want to talk about the definition of what it means to be saved. I think that that's really important. So to be saved simply means to be rescued. But there's a two-part piece to this. First, Jesus is rescuing us from the slavery of sin and the consequence of sin. The Bible tells us that the consequence of sin is death or the price of sin or the wages of sin is death, not the physical death. Even though you can make a decision to do something sinful and die in the physical, the death that it's talking about in the scriptures is that eternal death, that complete separation from God for eternity, i.e. hell, because hell is a real place. It does exist. And if you're not saved, you will go. Wasn't designed for us. Wasn't designed for us. But you can go. You can. If you're not saved, that's what's going to happen. Okay. And so with Jesus is saving us from the slavery to sin, meaning I'm not in bondage to lust. I'm not in bondage to my bad habits. I'm not in bondage to um, me cussing and gossiping. I, I'm not in bondage to these things. And not only am I not in bondage, but I don't have to suffer the consequence. Okay. He redeemed us. He paid the price for us. He came, lived the perfect life, died, rose with all power so he could rescue us. The second part of that rescue is for us to be rescued and also relocated. 
okay? He moves us into the kingdom of God. We've now been adopted. I now have a new identity in Christ. I am now a new creature because of the work that Jesus did. Nothing on my own, okay? All grace, all grace and faith. That's it. Not anything I did. So we get rescued, saved, and relocated. So now that you understand the importance of this, and I want to confirm this with scripture, okay? Colossians 1.13 says, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. I have new residency now. It's giving witness protection, okay? And now you can't ruin your witness. That, that's that's salvation. It is me being rescued from my terrible heart condition, me being rescued from the, the ways of this world and my sinful nature and my flesh and the devil, little Lucy and all of his demons. I'm being saved and relocated. And I now operate as a kingdom citizen. And I just think that that's so dope. So the way that you're able to be eligible right, to be saved or that you're able to go from unsaved to saved. It is outlined for us, not in John 3, 16, which a lot of us like to go to, but it is eligible for us in Romans 10 and 9 or the outline, the process. And I'm going to give you the four-step process. I call it the ABCs because it's literally A, B, C, D, okay? Romans 10 and 9, and I'm going to read it from the New American Standard Version of the Bible. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus as Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus as Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that's Romans 10 and 9. So here is your four-step process for you to be saved. This is how somebody asks you, how do I get saved? This is how you respond. You take them to Romans 10 and 9 and you give them these four steps, okay? We are going to also cross-reference other scripture, but Romans 10 and 9 is the major key here. So the first step is that you have to acknowledge him. And I'm not talking about Roman Reigns, okay? I'm talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. (laughs) I'm talking about acknowledging the fact that you are a sinner in need of a savior and that Jesus Christ is the only one that can save you. You have to acknowledge acknowledge him and acknowledge your need for him. Acknowledge. You have to understand that the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No one is good except for God. No one is good except for God. No one is good except for God. How do I know? Because Jeremiah 17 tells us, Jeremiah 17 and 9, that the heart is desperately wicked. Some translations say desperately sick and deceitful above all. We are born like that because of what happened in the garden over in Genesis 3. So we have this like spiritual congenital heart defect to where just we are just not good. Nobody has to teach a toddler how to lie or how to hide things, right? Nobody's teaching those babies that. It's just a part of that heart condition that they have. And so we have to acknowledge that I have this condition and I need to go see the great physician so I can get some work done. Okay, salvation is like getting a heart transplant in the spirit. I have this congenital heart defect. It's broken. Arteries clogged. Okay, all of us are guilty. All of us are guilty, but we have to acknowledge, hey, like I know that I'm a sinner and I know I'm in need of a savior. So we have to acknowledge us being sinners and then we have to acknowledge him, Jesus Christ, as our savior. As the one who can do the saving. I want us to look at 2 Corinthians 7 and 10, and it talks about the level of conviction that you feel and how it it brings 
forth repentance. It says for the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret. Repent means to change your mind. I'll link the video that I just did about how to improve your mind and your mindset. I think it'll be really beneficial where we talk about the role repentance plays in you being able to reestablish your mindset. But it, it produces repentance without regret leading to salvation. So you have to change your mind. So then you can be rescued. Like, oh, I, I need him. You have to understand like, oh no, my ways are wicked. I feel bad when I do this. I have to acknowledge that and be like, oh, I need him. <laughs> I Like I need him to help me. Okay. Because the sorrow of the world is only going to produce death. Right. If you don't acknowledge your sin and don't acknowledge that you need Jesus to save you, this is where you see people being kind of um, brought to that place of like, of condemnation and that, that feeling depressed, feeling like there's no hope, right? Hopelessness is, is where you, you get that worldly sorrow and that produces death. So true repentance from godly sorrow is going to bring you to this point to seek salvation. God, help me. So first part, acknowledge. Acknowledge your sin. Acknowledge that you are a sinner and that you need a savior. Because sometimes we acknowledge that we're sinners and we don't think we need to be saved. Okay? We need Jesus to save us. The second part, is to believe. Believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he came to the world. He lived a blameless life. He lived a blameless life, died on our behalf. And as a result of that, he died on our behalf, rose on the third day, resurrected with all power. All power, victory over death, hell and the grave. Okay. Period. So we have to believe that he's the son of God. He came with a blameless life. He fulfilled all three roles as priest, as prophet and king. He did it all. Died for no reason, like me, for us, but he didn't do it. <laughs> we did it. Got up on the third day, all power all power like that that right there you have to believe that thing okay you have to believe that thing so you have to acknowledge you have to believe okay the scripture says if you confess with confess with your mouth jesus as lord and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you have to believe belief is the core part of this this is where John 3, 16 ties in because scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that anyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life or everlasting life. Belief is a part of how, of the how. If you don't believe that he is who God says he is, that he did what God told him to do, he has the power that God anointed him with. If you don't believe, then you're not saved. Okay. Third is confess. You have to confess Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You have to confess Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. It's, this is a public declaration of your faith. And the confession is an outward expression of this internal allegiance to Jesus Christ and to his lordship. All right. If you confess Jesus as Lord, not simply that he is the Lord. Some translations say Jesus is Lord, but I like the new American standard version of the Bible because it's the most um, like bar for bar translation. Second to the interlinear Bible. Okay. Jesus as Lord, my personal Lord and savior. And this is important when we talk about Jesus and his role, because Jesus, the Christ, his last name isn't Christ, friend. Okay. Christ is his title. Christ meaning the Messiah, the anointed one. He is Jesus, the Christ. 
He is our Lord, meaning that he redeemed, purchased us. So he has rights to everything concerning us. He has lordship. And then, of course, him being our savior, like he saved us. He's the rescuer. We have to understand all three of that, like all three of those roles. He is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. He is our savior. He is the one that did the rescuing. And then also he is Lord, meaning that he redeemed us, purchased us with his blood. And so because of that, he tells us what to do. We humble ourselves. Humility, meaning I'm giving up my own self-governance. Okay, I'm giving up my ability to choose what I want to do. I only choose what he wants me to choose. Hmm? Lordship. You have to confess that. And over in Matthew 10, 32, Jesus says, therefore, everyone who confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my father who is in heaven. And so this public declaration is important because we're supposed to go out and make disciples and live our lives as living epistles, as living letters, as living uh, proof of the, the transformation, the transformational power that a relationship in Christ can bring. That like that we, our lives are supposed to witness. So even if you don't know uh, uh, every scripture off, off your tongue, the way that you live your life in integrity, the way that you live your life with patience and kindness and joy and peace is evidence all by itself. And there are too many people who are closeted Christians. We don't know what you believe. Okay. Because everybody that says, I love God. Do you love Jesus Christ? Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, <laughs> specifically. Because the Bible tells us that not only is Jesus Lord, but he is the way, the truth, and the life in John 14 and 6. Nobody gets to the Father but through him. And so this is why this confession piece is so important because the enemy is going to offer all of these counterfeit narratives about these ways you can get to the Lord. No. No. Jesus Christ is the only way for you to be saved by God. I'm not here to argue with you, friend. I love you. He said it. He, he said, that's how you come to me. And that that's really the beginning and the end. <laughs> like, he is the beginning and the end. How about that? Like, he said that these are the qualifications for you to be accepted into my kingdom. Okay? You have to believe and confess that Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. He is the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. That is the confession publicly. Okay? Because if you will confess in front of men when, you, when it's time for judgment, okay? And in my brain, this is how it's going to look, all right? It's going to be a big teleprompter, okay? A titantron, if you will. And it's going to be a video of our lives. And we're going to be sitting there like, mm, mm, <laughs> right? And when it comes time for us to face judgment, Jesus is going to be like, okay, God, listen, listen, Father, listen. She with me, though. She with me. And because of that, God isn't going to see my sin. He's going to see his son. And I'm going to be able to get on up in there. Okay? <laughs> That's the way it works in my brain. And I want that for you, too. So after you acknowledge that you're a sinner in need of a savior, that Jesus Christ is that savior, you believe, then you confess. Here's the last part. You have to do. You have to do. You are saved by grace only. You cannot work your way into heaven. That is why the Old Testament, like, is the Old Testament. That's why Jesus had to come and fulfill the law. We are incapable of, as human beings to live up to God's standard without his power, which is why we have the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us, which is why Jesus had to come and do it first and then leave 
our helper, our instructor, instructor, our comforter, our advocate, the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, because outside of his power, we have no ability to be able to live up to his standard. But because we have his power, as people who are saved, you got to do, okay? That means that you have to obey. That means that you have to take your faith and put it into action. You have to obey the teachings of Christ. You have to become a disciple. Okay? This is why the Bible says faith without works is dead. You're not saved by by works, but your faith empowers you to do good works. Like, man, I love God so much. There's nothing I will not do for him. So when I had a different video that I wanted to do, because I was really excited to show y'all my brain, okay? When I had a different video topic, but God said, this is the one to release. I said, okay. (laughs) Because it's not about me. It's about me being obedient and following his instructions and doing what he says is best. And a lot of times there is a struggle, especially when, We are um, new and seasoned Christians with us having this internal battle because what you declare and your decisions are not in alignment. Clinically, we call that cognitive dissonance, (laughs) okay? Like you say you believe something, your values, but your actions are not in alignment. And that cognitive dissonance makes you feel disconnected from God, makes you feel like he's distant. It causes a lot of inner turmoil. There is no peace because you're not living in the truth of the word. There is no my truth, his truth, her truth. There's the truth, Jesus. He is the truth. And just because we don't agree doesn't mean it's not true. Just because it doesn't line up with what you've been taught doesn't make it any less true. Just because your mama didn't say it, don't make it not true. We have to learn how to accept what's in the Bible as truth over everything else. There are things that are factual that are not the truth. Okay? Okay? All right. And it's not just me saying this. Jesus said it. In Luke 6, 46 through 49, he says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who digs, who dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when a flood occurred, the torrent burst against the house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who had heard and has not acted accordingly is like a man who built a house on the ground without any foundation and the torrent burst against it and immediately it collapsed. Immediately it collapsed and the ruin of that house was great. We have to understand that part of us being saved is allowing for Christ's lordship to transform us into his image and into his likeness. Okay. A lot of us come into the faith because there's, we want something from God. And we don't want simply just God. And so you come to the Lord because you have been like, oh, I need money. So I know if I give my life to Christ, then I'm going to be debt free. You might. You might, but you might not. If you don't allow him lordship to change your mind on the perspective of how you see money. And then you learn how to steward money. Then you may not. But if God never did all of the things that you wanted him to do, would you still love and serve him? Okay. If you never got what you wanted, would you love and serve him? If the answer is no, then we got to go to him and talk to him about that. This is why a lot of us are not secure in our salvation because we don't want to be transparent with the Lord. We don't even want to be transparent with ourselves. Some of us just don't want to do the things (laughs) like 
hey, this was more than what I thought I was getting myself into. And we just shy away from God instead of leaning into that with him. And so I want to give you these steps again so that way you understand what it really takes to be saved. And my prayer is that if you are already a a believer, that this solidified your understanding of what salvation is. If you are an unbeliever, that you accept the free gift of salvation and then you get connected with a Bible teaching church, Bible teaching, somewhere where you can get discipled, somewhere where you have community. You cannot do this on your own. Okay? It's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is, it is clear how critical community is when it comes to living out this life. Okay. Like first thing God said, wasn't cool was Adam was by himself. And that doesn't mean even in a marital relationship, that means just being by yourself. Ecclesiastes talks about how two people are better than one. And so this hyper independent self um, reliant society and narrative and lie that the enemy has purported is killing us. That's why there's a loneliness epidemic. And so first, you need to get in relationship and in friendship with the Lord so he can then bring you into the body of Christ. And then you can go about being transformed. This is an ongoing journey. There are phases to salvation, justification, meaning that you are now justified, redeemed. That's once you acknowledge, believe, and confess. The doing part is where you kind of tiptoe into the second phase of this, which is sanctification, where God is going to slowly transform you. It's not going to all happen overnight. You're going to mess up. We're all going to stumble. Okay? Donnie McClurkin said we fall down, but we get up. (laughs) And even scripture talks about how a righteous man stumbles and gets back up. So the perfection is not what is required. So much so that God sent Jesus because he knew we don't have the capacity to be perfect. Okay. The final stage of salvation is glorification, which will happen when Jesus comes back. I'm going to give you these steps. How do I get saved? One more time. And then I'm going to pray for those of you who may be watching and would like to give your life to Christ. So first, acknowledge. You're acknowledging that you are a sinner in need of a savior and that Jesus is that savior. Belief. You believe that Jesus is the son of God. He came here, lived a perfect life. He died on the cross for our sins. He got up, okay, was buried and got up on the third day with all power in his hands, defeating death, sin, and the grave. Okay, little Lucy, done for. (laughs) Done for. Because victory has already been proclaimed. I believe that. You confess publicly that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And then you do. You allow his teachings, his leadings, and the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Because once you get saved, Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. You do not have to tarry. You ain't got to do all that. No. Like once I'm at salvation, the Holy Spirit is, he seals our salvation. It is in Ephesians. Okay. Don't let the traditions of, of, of churches confuse you. Once you're saved, he seals our salvation. Meaning that Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. The minute you are saved. Hmm. Okay. All right. Do acknowledge, believe, confess, do. I pray that this has blessed you, that you understand how to get saved. You understand that it is a free gift and that in response to the love that we have for God, that we pursue him, we live out a life that is pleasing to him. It is like if I eat something good, And it's really good to me. 
I'm gonna call my friends and we're gonna go back to the restaurant. I'm, I'm gonna bring all the people, like, girl, you ain't heard about this. It's delicious. That's how I feel about sharing my faith. Like, oh, girl, no, girl, it's good. Best thing I ever ate, bread of life, okay? Bread of life. So I'm gonna pray for those of you who may be watching and who want to give your life to Christ. If you got anything from this video, if you have any questions, make sure you go ahead and drop them in the comments below and I will be happy to answer them. I'm thinking about doing a Bible study on the different phases and kind of doing a deeper dive into what it means to be saved because honestly, it is a core pillar of our faith. Like we're saved, we're saved. So Father God, I thank you Lord for the person watching under the sound of my voice, God. I thank you, Lord, that you knew before the beginning of time that they would be here, Lord. I thank you, God, for your sovereignty, for your majesty, for your goodness. I thank you, God, that while we were yet sinners, while we were in opposition to you, God, even while Adam and Eve were in the garden and they had sinned against you, God, that you already had a plan to redeem us, Lord, back to you. I thank you, God, that you are a loving father. I thank you, God, that you are a loving father. I thank you, God, that you are a powerful God, that you are the God Almighty. I thank you, God, for you sending Jesus. And I pray for the one God who is acknowledging their sin, God. I thank you that your word says that you search the heart and test the mind. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, for the belief. And for those who are struggling, God, I pray that you help their unbelief. I thank you, God, for the confession of faith that they are making. And I thank you, Lord, that your spirit that is on the inside of them as they um, acknowledge you, as they believe and confess that your Holy Spirit, our instructor and our advocate, God, will give them the power to walk out the life in a way that is pleasing to you, to walk out this life in a way that isn't according to your scripture. I thank you, God, that you light a fire on the inside of them, that they hunger and thirst for your word. I thank you, God, that they will not allow wolves in sheep's clothing to come in and get them off course, God, but that they will stay close to you, that they will draw near to you, God, that you will remove anything that is unlike you in their lives, God. I pray, Lord, that you allow them access to the, the sword, God, to their word, and that they spend time with you building a relationship, God. And it's through that relationship, Lord, that they will continue to look more and more like you daily. I thank you, God. The Bible says that heaven rejoices when one comes into the kingdom, God. And so I thank you for the sister or brother who may be watching this, God. I thank you, God, that you will light a fire on the inside of them. And I thank you and I celebrate them today, God. And we celebrate you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you if you have watched this all the way to the end. If you are a new believer, I'm going to link some videos on how to study the Bible, um, Bible study tools. We have a ton of resources here for you. And I just pray that you are overjoyed with the new relationship that you have just created with the father. I am so grateful for your life and for you being here. And until next time, friend, I love you. Bye.